Everyone has a monarch story, whether it's when you had caterpillars and chrysalises, to growing up and watching hundreds of monarchs in your windrow as a kid. And as we farm, there's nothing more beautiful than when you're out in the field working and you're seeing all these butterflies following you and you're able to observe them. We grow commodity crops and commodity pork. This is our life's work. It's a business, but it's also our lifestyle. Farmers are naturally conservationists. We are the stewards of the land. This is an opportunity, but it's also a responsibility to leave the ground we farm, the animals we produce, in better shape than how we found them. The monarch is so widely recognized, it's obviously iconic in this country. And the Midwest in particular has historically been very important for monarch breeding. The Corn Belt, that's mostly a landscape of corn and soybeans now. And so it's a huge patch in the landscape that's used for agriculture. So it's mostly in the last 20 to 25 years that the use of herbicide we've had this big decline in milkweeds and the scientists think that's probably a pretty significant cause of monarch decline. My entire farming career up until about two years ago was getting rid of this weed. When I was younger we hand weeded our soybeans and we would pull those darn things and get the milk on our hands and we were too good at eliminating it and now we've maybe gone too far. There's collateral damage. There is an urgency. We need 1.4 billion milkweed plants to restore the monarch to where they once were. Minnesota sits in a unique situation because we are part of that migration pattern. We can still have milkweed and still have the productivity that we need in our ag lands. In order to recover the monarch, we need to work with farmers and ranchers across the country to restore habitat on edges, buffer zones, marginal lands, areas that would be compatible with the farming and ranching operation. And so the concept of the monarch habitat exchange is using an approach like a marketplace and farmers and ranchers are familiar with working in a market-based environment to sell a crop. And so we want to empower them to create a monarch habitat crop that they can market through the exchange. An important part of developing the Monarch Habitat Exchange is the accountability. In other words, how do we measure the commodity? We're developing what we call a habitat quantification tool. And what that tool does is it measures the actual quality of habitat. The HQT is a really important tool for allowing us to assess the value of a parcel of land to monarch production. Our goal is to actually be able to quantify how many monarchs a given piece of land will produce. We can't reach our conservation goals with monarchs unless we engage the farming community. And EDF has existing partnerships with farmers and a model that works for providing incentives to create habitat for species. It's very much a collaborative effort. EDF provides an opportunity for us to be data-driven, science-based. We wiped out this plant in some places that we needed to keep it. Now we know, and now we need to rebuild it throughout the system in the places that it best serves the species so that we can uh, get the species back to where it needs to be. Our overall goal is to restore two million acres within the next 10 years so as to make a significant contribution to the recovery of the monarch. We all need to contribute in some fashion, whether that's allowing a roadside or some marginal areas to be restored to habitat or providing some funds, the knowledge and expertise with those different resources and tools and strategies. It's a contribution to restoring a national icon, coming together to do something beneficial for a species we all love. 